Eight years ago, I really wanted a Ford Raptor. But I was a broke college kid, so I bought a 2001 Ford Explorer Sport Track. I asked myself, could I turn this into a Mini Raptor? Quick note, Ford did bring the Ranger Raptor to the United States. Yes, my Sport Track would be a better comparison to this, but the Ranger Raptor wasn't a thing when I planned this all out. So I'm sticking with the F-150 Raptor. To consider it a Mini Raptor, it needs to share a few specs with the actual Raptor. The 2014 model year Raptor had a 410 gear ratio, a locking rear differential, a limited slip front differential, basically a 35 inch tire, and about 411 horsepower and 430 foot-pounds of torque. The 2001 Sport Track also had a 410 gear ratio, but it had an open rear differential, an open front differential, some just regular 28, 29 inch tall tires, and about 205 horsepower to its name. Hmm, I think we can make some of those happen. I picked up a set of 35 inch tires. They are Kenda Cleaver RTs, the 35 10.5 R17s. The wrapped around bronze 17 by 9s for some extra pizzazz. And a table full of other parts. Let's start with all the front stuff on the left side of the table. I had planned to install an Eaton E-Locker into the front differential, but that didn't happen, and you'll see why later. The front differential will get a set of 513 to 1 gears to help turn those 35 inch tires. The front torsion keys will also not be installed in this video, and at the back we have the complete bearing kit for the front Dana 35 IFS differential. On to the rear. We have a set of 513 to 1 gears to match the front. We have a Spartan locker for the differential, a complete Ford 8.8 .8 bearing kit, lift shackles which also won't be installed for now. Lastly, a C-clip illuminator kit for the Ford 8.8. .8. Later on in the video, you'll see why these are important. Let's dive in, starting with the most important part of all. Tires! <laughs> thing to do would be to install the differential, the lockers, and all that jazz before putting the new 35s on. But I can't, I'm impatient, I can't help myself. Let's put the 35s on. Dude, where are they? The tires are still being put together at the shop, dummy. You just saw me drop them off. We had a plan, man. We were supposed to be filming now for the 35s. Best I can do are these uh, old 31s. Just throw them on. It'll give you some more content for your uh, comparison thing. Fine, we're gonna, I guess we'll do that. Okay, let's put all these tires side by side. The left are the factory 255s. The center are the 31s. The right's the 35s. If we stack them in front of each other, it really shows the size of the 35s compared to the 255s. I did a quick visual inspection of clearance after I bought them. Should fit. And when they're installed, the rears fit perfectly only needing slight trimming on the fender liner on the rear edge. The front fit with the wheel straight, but rubbed a little bit when turning. But a cutting wheel and a hammer solved that problem nicely. I should also mention that when I bought the Sport Track, it already had a 3 inch body lift installed. It may or may not be helping with the clearancing. Okay, what's next? We'll start with removing the cover and all the diff fluid. Then remove the carrier center pin and C-clips. The brake drum comes off next, followed by pulling the axle shafts. Removing the four bolts for the bearing races lets the differential be free to fall on your face. An air over hydraulic press makes easy work of removing the old bearings and installing the new ones. Our new 513 pinion will also get a new bearing and shim. I based the shim size off the 410 gears, we may need to change it after some measurements. As my past self works on swapping the 410 ring gear for the 513, present self will explain the new reasoning for this massive jump. There are many ways to figure out what ratio to run with a certain tire, and many of them fall down to personal preference. Here's what I did. Take the new tire size you want to run and divide it by the old tire size. Then take this number and multiply it by the current gear ratio. This new number will be the gear ratio that is needed to keep the new tires with the same performance as the old gears and tires. I then found the gear set that was closest number-wise. 
I actually went one step further to help offset the added weight of the new tires. One other helpful thing is to look up tire size versus gear ratio versus engine speed graphs. These help put into perspective what a change on either side can do. The locker I chose for the rear is a Spartan locker. It is one of the simplest types of lockers to install. It replaces all of the internals of the open carrier design. There are four main pieces to this locker. Two adders and two inners. The outers are where the axle shafts grab, and the inners are the actual locking mechanism. Each inner piece has two spring-loaded pins. These nest into the grooves on the opposite piece. These pins keep the outward pressure to lock both sides together. When the differential is not under power, these pins allow the edge pieces to slide over each other, allowing for an open differential type turning performance. This is where I encountered a problem with the locker. The center pin doesn't clear the ring gear teeth. Turns out, Certain Ford 8.8s that have the 410 or a 513 gear ratio have ring gears that are too thick to clear the carrier center pin. This means the ring gear needs to come off to install the locker properly. Then the ring gear gets reinstalled. This creates a second problem with installing the axle shafts. The center pieces of the locker need to be removed to install the C-clips for the axles. Because the center pin is now pinned in by the ring gear, there would be no way to install the C-clips for the factory axles. Getting a set of C-clip eliminator axles will solve this problem. These use a pressed bearing on the axle housing end to hold everything in place, meaning there is no C-clip inside the differential to worry about. Full disclosure, I did not know about this problem when I was ordering parts. For budgetary reasons, I almost didn't buy the new axles. And people think us YouTubers know what we're doing. <laughs> the C-Clip Eliminator axles have six main parts. The axle, the retaining plate, the seal spacer, the axle seal, the new bearing, and the bearing spacer. All of this gets pressed together until the bearing edge is touching the lip on the axle shaft. These axles also don't come with wheel studs installed. It would have been easier to install these before pressing everything together. The end flange of the axle tube needs to be modified to fit the new axle bearings. Because of this, the brakes need to be removed. Next, the brake mount gets removed and hung off to the side, being careful not to bend the brake line. A slide hammer makes quick work of removing the old axle bearing. The axle tube needs to be modified to fit the new axle bearing. This requires the axle tube to be cut back flush with the lip of the flange. The bearing mount plate then gets a bead of silicone around the lip slot, then installed to the axle flange. The brakes go back on and then the axle shaft is installed. Rear work done. This video is focusing on the front differential. There's links to previous videos where I replaced all the front suspension components. The front CV shafts can be popped out using a pry bar. I think these shafts have been removed before. It didn't take much force to pop the shaft out. With the axle popped out, the whole shaft can be removed. There are only three bolts holding the differential assembly in place. It's good practice to use a floor jack to support the differential while removing the bolts. These things are quite heavy and awkward. Being able to remove the differential and work on it at a bench height is such a great change from working on the ground. This differential uses an intermediate shaft on the long arm of the housing to the CV axle. This shaft is held in place the same way as a CV axle, so a screwdriver works well to pop it free. Then pliers can be used to remove it completely. Four bolts lets us remove the carrier assembly to work on it the same way we did the rear. And we can also clean up the whole housing. 
Bit of a time jump because the schedule for leaving for Sand Hollow was coming up fast, but everything is reinstalled with the new 513 gears. But no e-locker. So, I messed up when ordering parts. The e-locker I ordered is nowhere near close to fitting the housing. I should have done my research better. I ordered it based off of this guide, assuming the Dana 35 IFS, which the Sport Track does have, was the same housing type all the way back to 1990. But it ain't. Whoops. Who needs a locker on both axles anyway? Oh, He's going to do it again, isn't he? Dune wins! You lose your momentum because you bounce! <laughs> you got to drive it home, stupid! Round two. Oh! <laughs> uh oh. You're sitting on frame. Yep. You're going to have to He's trying to back up. Oh. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Stop. Hold on a second. You got the tension off at least. Take two. You ready? He's ready. I'd back it up and give her another run. You moved him, but you're gonna have to jerk him again. Uh, yeah, you're burying. You got slack. Yeah, no. All right, take three. Garrett said he's ready. <laughs> Kill it. Can 
I guess we'll be able to drive home tonight, so far.